Here is yet again another body of water on old maps of North America that turned out not to exist. I've covered a few others, and they are all associated with the wish to find a quick passage to Asia, but each has its own unique backstory. Let's start our search for why this sea exists at raremaps.com. Jean-Baptiste Nolan was the first to publish a map showing this sea. Here it is on his 1775 world map, published nearly 70 years after his death. This is a later state of his 1700 world map. For this depiction of the sea, Nolan was sued for plagiarism, but more about that later. This mythical sea was shown on nearly 250 known maps throughout the 18th and early 19th centuries, and even more if you count the different states and early manuscript maps. This inland sea was first hypothesized by French geographer Guillaume de Lille, but not wanting nations other than France to profit from its discovery, he never published a map showing the sea. He did, however, make some manuscript maps. This map was a copy by his brother, Joseph Nichols de Lisle, originally made in 1695. On the map, there is a note within what he called the Sea of the West that read it was not yet discovered, but known to the natives. Guillaume produced these manuscript maps for aristocrats in the hope that it would spark further Western exploration in French North America. He explained why he believed the Sea of the West existed in his memoir. I don't believe that this sea's existence is debatable, because, as Gomera reports, the Spanish saw it on their way to Quivera, even seeing ships from its coast. Gomera is referring to Francisco Lopez de Gomera, a 16th century Spanish historian who wrote about the expeditions of conquistador Francisco Vasquez de Coronado. De Lille goes on to write, Writing about the travels of Vasquez Coronado, Jo de Latte, stated that the inhabitants of Cibola, located a little to the west of New Mexico, obtain Hyde's eight days journey from where they live. Ramusio also mentions this same thing, and adds that the plains where they obtain these hides are located by a sea, undoubtedly the same sea on which Quivira is located. Delille went on to cite a few other sources, including another Italian geographer, missionaries, and prominent explorers, the reports varied in detail. Some said that a sea could be reached directly by a great river that flowed west from the Mississippi. Others said that the river would take you to the mountains, and on the other side is a sea. But not a single one of these geographers, priests, or explorers had actually seen the sea themselves. These were all second-hand accounts. They got this information from natives. The Sioux Indians referred to the Sea of the West as a great lake with stinking water. They claimed it could be reached in 15 days by river, and in the sea, they see people like us that sell knives unlike ours. Delille believed these people were from Japan or some other East Asian country. According to the natives, these foreigners had no hair, either on their heads or as beards, and so they called them peeled heads. The natives apparently told these foreigners good things about the French, because according to them, these foreigners said that they would like to meet. On top of this, according to Delille, the Illinois people's history said that they once lived by the Western Sea, but were chased inland by their enemies. Reports by natives mentioned in Delille's 1695 memoir appear to be confirmed when in 1703 a French army officer that was serving in Canada, Baron de La Hontan, published accounts of his 1688-89 voyage upon the Long River which falls into the River Mississippi. But again, crucial parts were told to him by the natives. Lahontan failed to find the source of this Long River due to what he called obstacles that stood in his way. Natives allegedly told him that if he was to continue following the river, he'd see that it originated in the tall mountains to the west, and on the other side of the mountains was another river that flows down to a great salt lake. 300 leagues in circumference. Lahontan tried to convince a native that lived around the sea to come back with him to Canada as proof of its existence, but none would because according to him, they cared but little for riches. Delille seemed to understand that his audience may be skeptical of the Native Americans' accounts instead of first-hand accounts of French explorers. He wrote, It is true that most of the information we have regarding this sea comes from the reports of natives. However, it seems very unlikely that so many different people in different times and places would collude to deceive us, 
with nothing to gain from this deception. But a big question still needed to be answered. Why, after all this time, was this sea still not well known to any European nation, especially since there was an account of the Spanish finding it? Guillaume's brother hypothesized that the Spanish tried to keep the Sea of the West a secret from other European nations, and in doing so, lost the information themselves, making future generations ignorant of its existence. Meanwhile, the French were able to retain some of these Spanish memoirs. And in Guillaume's memoir, he wrote, You might ask how such a sea could be that close to New France without the French people living there knowing about it. I would answer that they have heard stories about it for some time, but through negligence or certain difficulties, they have been prevented from clarifying these stories. Guillaume hoped these explanations would spark French exploration to the region. He also presented his manuscript maps, and at least one globe, which was given to a Chancellor Boucherat. When the Chancellor died, Jean-Baptiste Nolan, who was the geographer to the king's brother, apparently got a good look at the globe, because according to the DeLille family, his 1700 world map looked a little too similar. Amongst the similarities was the Sea of the West. The DeLille family sued and won after a six-year battle, and was also allowed to confiscate any plates used to make the world map, as well as any copies of the map that were already printed. But with Guillaume not publishing maps with the Sea of the West, and Nolan's taken off the market, the Sea of the West disappeared. But around half a century later, with Guillaume long past, it made a comeback, after Guillaume's brother presented his arguments for the sea's existence to the Royal Academy of Sciences. Maps were also published with the sea depicted by Guillaume and his brother-in-law, Philippe Bouache. Now in the public domain, the sea was quickly copied by other map makers. The maps include an opening to the sea between 47 and 48 degrees latitude, that was allegedly found by Greek explorer Juan de Fuca in 1592, though scholars debate on his existence. De Fuca was sent by Spain to look for the Strait of Anian. After he believed he had accomplished the task, he left and failed to extensively explore the area, as he felt he wasn't properly armed to fight off any hostile natives. His discoveries were never confirmed, but nevertheless, it became connected to the Sea of the West. Today's Strait of Juan de Fuca is named after this fictional strait. At around 43 degrees latitude is the entrance to a large river connecting to the Sea of the West. This river was apparently discovered by Spanish explorer Martin de Aguilar. The Sea of the West would of course eventually be disproven, but it wasn't until the mid-1780s, after multiple explorers surveyed the coast where entrances to the sea and the sea itself should have been. But this didn't end all theories that there was a water passage to the Pacific through North America. It would take decades more of exploring for that. Before I end this video, thank you to today's sponsor, RareMaps.com. RareMaps.com is an online antique map shop. On their website, you can find and purchase most of the maps you saw in this video, and they're always adding more. They have over 10,000 original antique maps in their inventory. Again, that's RareMaps.com. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching.